that we were playing, I was seeing if I could try and figure out what color or mood the music might have been, and I tried to play it that way. You guys made them feel totally comfortable about their playing, and they're going to look back on this and say, wow, I was playing with some world-class players, and I was nervous, but I, I dealt with that, and I was able to forge ahead, and that's kind of a life lesson, not only just a musical lesson. The Albany Chain Music Initiative um, came out of the idea that chain music is really an ideal setting for teaching the skills that it takes to, um, to make chain music. Skills such as shared leadership and uh, collaboration, teamwork, conflict resolution, and we brought the, this project not only to the high school, but also to the middle school and also the elementary school, so to, to all three levels. We lose students at the middle school level big time. We're an urban district. We need to keep the kids involved in music. It keeps them off the streets, it keeps them out of gangs, it gives them something to be responsible. I mean, playing an instrument is a responsibility. It teaches dedication, it teaches discipline, and they need it. Walton Chamber Players was founded in 1997 um, and we perform all over the United States and many of our concerts are paired with outreach. This outreach might be in the form of a one-day residency, a week-long residency, and we do this all across the country. So at the high school, we really focus on coaching student ensembles. At the Hackett Middle School, we brought some of those skills that we use in chamber music to the orchestra setting. And at the uh, elementary school, we really introduce the students to you know, what is chamber music, what are the instruments, who are the musicians, why do we do what we do. So many of those students, especially at the high school level, they just want to fade into the, the crowd, you know. And I think for them to be drawn out of that crowd is important. And maybe it was uncomfortable for them at first, I could see that. But I could also see that as the residency went along, that that shifted from this uncomfortable feeling to a great sense of ownership and, and pride. I think one of our goals is not to come in and say, here's a program that we've created and this is the only way it can be and these are the kind of kids we want involved and this is the way we want to run. We come in and we say, you know, what are you trying to get out of your kids that you're not getting? It's very different than playing with an orchestra because you have to really know your part and um, it's really like all about you standing on your own but also with the group at the same time. The group of students, they don't normally rehearse together, but also their abilities, say, perhaps aren't what the first ensemble would be, though they're, they're wonderful students and they've been playing for a while, and some of them have, you know, specific things that they haven't uh, mastered yet on their instruments. But when I heard their performance yesterday for the, for the ensemble during sixth period, it was a tremendous change. I saw they had more confidence, they played with dynamics, so I, I was able to see their musicianship come up, and they were actually proud of what they did. So that was a huge win for us. What is chamber music? Who can tell me what chamber music is? Oh, you ran the end. When you have a big group of people, are we a really big group? No, not such a big group. It's usually a pretty small group. And who do we not have? There's uh, no a group. conductor. No conductor. That's right. And so we've talked about this a whole bunch. How do we how do we play together when we don't have a conductor? We breathe. What else? You sniff. We sniff. That's kind of part of breathing. Yes, what else do we do? We look at the notes. What else do we look at? We look at each other, and what about this one? Everyone always forgets this one, but it's so important. Yeah, you. Ears, what about the ears? What about 
we do it with our ears? We're listening to each other. They really kind of dissected chamber music and we got to learn about all the different parts, about the techniques of playing together and watching each other and listening, and also about the poise of being a musician and how you need to perform and always be aware of how you're even just looking and sitting and playing, and also the responsibility of being in a group where you are the only person playing one part, and that's how it is in chamber music. Yes, much better. The rest are really important. And you know what? Whenever you play, um, whether it's in this classroom or whether it's you know in, in the concert, remember, music is a process. You know? What I mean with that is that it's all a learning experience. And even, you know, for us, for, for us who done this for many years, you know, it's still a learning experience. Here, to me, I will always stress to students, I want you to be confident. This helps build that confidence. continued visits from you, they, it really inspires them to be something. You know, like I said, I can show them videos and I can, you know, I can play a violin, but it's not the same because, as crazy as it sounds, it's not me doing it. Can we practice our bow? Yes, let's practice our bow. So we're done? So now if we face the audience, we face the audience, that's right. And then we bow. Then we bow, that's right.